Hey everyone, Kyle Mounts here. Hopefully you are having a nice and so far quiet Thursday evening. Uh, we'll give a few more people a chance to kind of log in here uh, before we dive into the details. A couple of things we're going to talk about. Uh, one, an update on our severe weather potential as we go through the rest of this evening. And we've seen all of the devastating video out of portions of Montgomery and Howard counties from Wednesday, what we're gonna look at, now we're starting to get some of those numbers coming in. How long were these tornadoes on the ground? How powerful were they? You know, you've probably heard at this point, we had that EF3 in uh, portions around the Kokomo area. Uh, of course, we've seen the Starbucks that's been flattened by that. Also, the National Weather Service office in Northern Indiana confirming another EF3 there in uh, Allen County around the Fort Wayne area. So Wednesday was certainly a tough day across central Indiana, severe weather wise. We do want to get you updated as far as things this evening, they are pretty quiet for us. So let's go ahead and show you. This is Storm Team 6 radar and we have a few showers up to the north. So far things are having a tough time just kind of getting going for us this evening. And I don't think we're necessarily complaining about that. Uh, we did have one thunderstorm that was pretty powerful um, as it was moving from Illinois. And then as soon as it got into Indiana, and I'll show you a little bit over the last hour, had a lot of lightning, it crossed the state line, and it really just uh, fell apart. So we're in uh, pretty good shape there, at least for the time being, but we still do have the slight risk of severe storms going on across uh, central Indiana for the next several hours. Let me silence that. So, anyway, um, Austin asking about is it, what's it going to be like in Brownsburg, um, and we'll take a look here at the TrueCast model and what it's showing for uh, this evening. But uh, so far, it's kind of been overplaying the development of any thunderstorms. Still some gusty winds isolated tornado we just can't rule that out uh, so let's take you into TrueCast now real quick we'll look at this and then we'll look uh, back at yesterday's storms and here we are 830 and here's kind of what I've been talking about it's overplaying things uh, a little bit as we go to 830 that's not actually what we're seeing happening across central Indiana so uh, as we go through the next couple of hours isolated strong to severe storms we can't let our guard down yet even as we approach midnight tonight, we could still have some of those thunderstorms uh, going on. Tina saying, thankful no one was injured or killed in those tornadoes. Uh, yeah, about 10 to 15 injuries, I still think, is what we're holding at as far as uh, reports of injuries. None of those serious. Just amazing when you see all the damage uh, and some of those large structures that came down. So, uh, and uh, Lisa asking about Carmel. And these are going to be very hit and miss. Not everybody's going to see them, kind of like last night where uh, only a couple of areas that were really impacted by tornadoes, Howard County several times. Um, so most of us will not see any of the uh, severe weather this evening, but there's still that isolated potential as we kind of back this up again for you. And you can see around 9, 930, um, could have a few of those storms around Lebanon, back toward Rockville, around or south of Crawfordsville. Um, toward Indianapolis as we get to around 11 o'clock. Um, and so there you can see Eddie around the Greencastle area about 10, 1030. But uh, then it starts to weaken here even as we get to 1230. But that could be overplayed. So far, this model has been generating thunderstorms, but they've really just yet to fire up, um, as you can see here on radar again real quick. So, uh, all right, and Felicia asking about, curious as to how long the tornado was on the ground in Montgomery County, saying she lives near where it hit. And so we're gonna dive into those here for just a second. Um, Rick asking, will this go into tomorrow morning in Logansport? Uh, I think we're going to be, once we get past two o'clock in the morning, should be in pretty good shape. So uh, here's a look at the uh, tornado map that our digital team and uh, PJ has put together for us. And you can see also that on uh, the RTV6 app as well, and you can click on that. So what we will do, we'll take you in here around Montgomery County. And uh, that tornado was on the ground here southeast of Crawfordsville. And uh, get our bearings there, you can see crossed near the Mace area. And that one had 
uh, was rated an EF2 with winds peaking at 120 miles per hour. So it was on the ground, a track there a little over five miles, 5.38 miles. Uh, it was a tornado that was 125 yards wide. Uh, that happening just after 2.30 yesterday afternoon. Uh, so it was a tornado that they say largely tracked over the uh, open rural countryside. Major damage though to some homes and barns in the Lindsberg area. And it was around Lindsberg that got bumped up this rating. Originally, they were rating it as an EF1, but uh, now it's been rated as an EF2. Again, those peak winds at 120 miles per hour. So that was the one in Montgomery County. I know Ann Kelly has been there all day long tracking and bringing you information. Um, and then we'll touch on, before we get up into Howard County, uh, take you in around Indianapolis because we did have a uh, brief EF0 tornado that was uh, confirmed by the National Weather Service here. And what I want to say too is that all of these reports are still preliminary, so the numbers, they may change a little bit. Uh, sorry, as we're working with the map here. So you can see there's I-70. So this was off uh, just north of I-70 there. And again, that one was uh, peak winds of 85 miles per hour. It was a path that was uh, around a mile and a half long. It was a tornado that was 50 yards wide, and that happening just before 7 o'clock yesterday, or no, I'm sorry. Let me... So it had peak winds of 80 miles per hour um, and was only on the ground for about 0.3 miles, uh, 100 yards wide there. So had some windows blown out of a home near the intersection of 25th and LaSalle Street, some roof damage to a building uh, on Stanton Street. That's what the Weather Service found and that's what they're using to classify what these winds were. They go out and they actually look at the damage and then they kind of put that into their formula and uh, that's what gives them uh, what they think the winds were as it moved through. So there you can see there's Keystone Avenue. We're looking at I-70 and uh, so it was just to the northeast of the uh, downtown area there. Uh, as we go out and right around Mass Ave, uh, you can see where that crosses uh, I-70. Okay, we'll take you up to the north now and uh, hopefully save you a little bit of headache here. So uh, let's go I know we're asking about Kokomo, so we'll go up here and uh, touch on this one. And uh, let me get my information together here for you. So we had, uh, of course, a few around the Kokomo area, so I want to make sure that we get uh, the right details here on each of these. You can see the three that impacted uh, parts of Howard County, one that crossed from Carroll into Howard County. Uh, so we had um, the first one in the Kokomo area. That was around 3.20 in the afternoon. Oh, we can Okay. Um, so PJ was uh, stopping by, and here we go. We've got some more information. Yeah, as we uh, look at that one and where that tornado started. Uh, so you can see that was an EF1, uh, touched down around 540. That was west of Route 29, and then it crossed Highway 31. So that was the EF1 that traveled uh, 17 miles, which is a long time, a long track tornado for you. Uh, width of 100 yards on the ground, uh, about 42 minutes in total here, had several barns, sustained partial wall and roof damage, and uh, one garage that was slid off of its foundation there you can see. And also, of course, we had some uh, tree damage, some crop damage that was out there as well. Uh, Bob saying he just missed the tor uh, Kokomo tornado at 35 and 31. Uh, glad to hear that. Uh, we're glad to hear again that so many people uh, made it through these all right and with just some minor injuries is uh, certainly uh, quite impressive. So this is the uh, track of the EF3 tornado. You can see that was on the south side of Kokomo, and we'll get some more info here, but you can see uh, there's IU Kokomo, downtown Kokomo. So this crossed uh, nine, uh, 931 
almost making it to 31. So that happened, that tornado touched down around 3.30 in the afternoon uh, and then continued its path, uh, which as I uh, get into the other details here, we'll click on that part. And uh, so it was on the ground for about 10 minutes. Um, you can see it was around 300 yards wide and lots of homes were damaged there as it really kind of moved through uh, a very populated area. Uh, there we had, uh, looks like now we're up to around 20 minor injuries, uh, some wind speeds that reached 152 miles per hour. So that's a significant EF3 tornado. Uh, we do not see many of those in central Indiana. And uh, of course, just last week, we had some tornadoes that moved through Howard County back in 2013. It was an EF2 that moved through uh, Kokomo and uh, had a very similar uh, path to some of those that we've seen uh, or saw last night. Then we also had the uh, one tornado around and south of Rucheville. We had spotters on this one last night. And so as we click here and get us some more information, that one ended up being rated an EF1 tornado uh, with peak winds around 85 miles per hour. So that touching down uh, just south of County Road 700 North and then moving largely over countryside, um, did cross actually a waterway, which is important uh, to note. I know there's one myth out there that tornadoes don't cross uh, waterways. That's just not true. Uh, tornadoes are gonna go where they wanna go. Um, so let's see. So those are the uh, tornadoes that we had that tracked around Howard County and Shelby asking about the one over Indianapolis again. So sure, we can go down and uh, take a look at that one. So that was rated an EF0 tornado with winds that peaked at 80 miles per hour. And you can see there's uh, Mass Ave. We've got uh, Mass Ave here, then I-70, then you've got Keystone Avenue. So uh, we're looking northeast of the downtown area. And uh, the details on that one, I can even zoom in a little bit more for you here. I'll just have to move my map around a little bit and again you can uh, find this story and this interactive map too on the rtv6 app uh, so you can get that information and look at this and share it uh, as well because i know now that we've seen all that damage there's a lot of interest uh, from the survey teams that have been out there and what were the uh, wind strengths with the storm so and this one happened around uh, 4 18 um, yesterday afternoon and then it was on the ground uh, for uh, only about a minute or so. So it was pretty brief um, and amazing late. Didn't have any injuries out of that one either. As uh, I look at the time on that one, and that was at 418. So you think about it, a lot of people who were uh, getting ready to head home for the day could have been out there on the roadways. Uh, okay, so a couple more people, Catherine, um, asking about Montgomery County, Ryan also asking about that area. So uh, we'll zoom back out and take a look for you in Montgomery County uh, once again. And uh, so that was the tornado that ended up was rated an EF2 uh, because of the damage that the National Weather Service found uh, in the uh, Lindsberg area. So preliminarily they had it rated as an EF1 and then upgraded it last night. So there you can kind of see the path. So we started over here around uh, Ladoga Road and that touched down around 2.38 in the afternoon. So this was actually the first of that seven hours worth of tornado warnings that we had across central Indiana. And then it continued to track. Uh, you can see there moved uh, just around and south of Mace and then got to 136. Uh, before lifting up there at East uh, 300 South. Um, so that tornado, that path lasted about 10 minutes. Um, it was 125 yards wide and was on the ground. So that's a path of a little over five miles uh, that that one was on the ground. Of course, we had the one in portions of Howard County that was on the ground for about 17 miles. So we had some large tornadoes yesterday, some that were what are called long track tornadoes that were on the ground for a very long time. 
Um, 17 miles by central Indiana standards is quite a long time for a tornado to be on the ground. So uh, also had some questions, uh, Crystal asking about Washington Street on the east side. At this point, it's uh, these are the five that the National Weather Service has been out and surveyed damage and that they've found consistent with tornado damage. Uh, we'll wait and they'll still be getting in additional information. Um, we could have uh, additions to this as far as tornadoes or we may get some more reports that uh, the Weather Service finds those were um, straight line winds. So that's something that uh, we'll be watching uh, for to come through. So these reports may change a little bit but five tornadoes in central Indiana, then there were two more up around the Fort Wayne area, uh, also had an EF3 up there, so had winds around 150 miles per hour with that tornado too. So far, you know, we're in pretty good shape as far as this evening goes. We wanna keep it that way. Don't wanna jinx anything as we look at uh, Storm Team 6 radar here. You can see there are a few showers uh, even north of White County, as well as uh, Monticello area. So we kind of widen things out and I'll turn on our other radar here. You can see that there's still some activity back in parts of Missouri, uh, back in Illinois as well um, as a cold front is going to be moving through. Part of it's already in to central Indiana. So um, we haven't had anything firing. Uh, we had one cell around Sullivan and uh, that one quickly fell apart as uh, it crossed the state line. And uh, so here we go. Here's a quick look for you. Again, we're not seeing any activity so far in central Indiana. This model showing by 10 o'clock, still having a line of some thunderstorms stretching from around Danville through Greencastle, uh, Brazil, Terre Haute, right along I-70, then moving toward uh, Mooresville, Martinsville as we get to midnight, uh, Greenwood, Franklin as well and then falling apart by one o'clock. So uh, don't let your guard down just yet. We'll uh, still continue to monitor that situation. Uh, so Wendell asking, can you elaborate on if you think Tornado Alley is indeed moving east and where uh, the information's coming from? So the information I was just talking about with the uh, tornado paths, um, so these are the survey reports so far from the National Weather Service in Indianapolis. The map itself and the detailed information um, is something that our digital team has put together and you can find that story on the RTV6 app and you can uh, click on each of those little tornado icons and that'll give you uh, some additional information on each of those. Uh, Ryan also asking about uh, the changes in Tornado Alley and you know, there's, of course, when you think of Tornado Alley, you think of out in Oklahoma. Uh, switch back here for a moment. And that is where we see most of the tornado activity. There has been a spike, not so much recent, although we've seen uh, several of our tornado outbreaks here in recent history. But uh, across central Indiana, there does seem to be a secondary spike and in, into parts of the Ohio Valley. So there's a lot of research still going into that. Um, so maybe not necessarily a shift, but we are seeing a little bit of a spike. Um, you would be correct in that, that uh, we have been in recent history anyway. Uh, I was looking with Kevin uh, here at some of our central Indiana tornado outbreaks and uh, of course you go back just to 2013 in November where we had 30 tornadoes uh, in a day. Uh, the all-time 37 tornadoes in 1990 that was June 2nd 1990. Uh, but we look at like the top 10 and the last uh, or four of those have happened in the last seven years or so because we've got uh, Number two on the list is the 2013 outbreak with 30 tornadoes. In 2011, uh, April 19th of 2011, we had 29 tornadoes in a day. Uh, May 30th, 2004, had uh, 24 tornadoes in a day. We get back to uh, May 25th, 2011, had 22 tornadoes in a day there. Um, and you notice with the exception of November, a lot of those are in the spring. That's typically when we see severe weather in central Indiana. That, of course, has kind of been thrown out the window. We've got to be prepared uh, for severe weather 12 months out of the year. 
um, because there's no month that we have a zero percent chance as we've uh, looked at history um, but certainly as far as the outbreaks it's been very unusual here in August um, so let's see um, and then Wendell saying that there have been some tornado warnings with the storms back in Illinois uh, so again yeah we're not letting our guard down here this evening although things have been quiet and that's I don't want us to get comfortable with that because of course by this time yesterday we were well into our tornado coverage um, but this is a different situation we're kind of waiting on that trigger that cold front to sweep through central Indiana so still the chance that we could have some gusty winds with those storms uh, we'll take a look at radar here for you. and uh, again while things are quiet in central Indiana and you can see there's just a few showers up here uh, well to the north of Logansport and Peru if I widen this out I'll turn on a different radar source and we'll also get um, turn on our watches and warnings and so far um, not seeing any warnings in Illinois right this minute uh, we look back into Missouri, there around Springfield, you can see these storms have some severe thunderstorm warnings on them. So uh, we'll, of course, continue to watch that for you. Um, let's see. Looking back through uh, a few questions here. So... See, Crystal asking if there's a map to show where past tornadoes have hit over the years. Uh, I can see if I can find one um, here. I don't happen to have one right at my fingertips. Um, but let's see. Well. Here you go. This is actually what I was talking about with the tornado activity. And of course, this is where you would expect to see it, Tornado Alley in Oklahoma. But then you see these oranges, which do get into central Indiana. Um, and so there is a little bit more of a spike um, that's in there. So uh, that specifically, what does that mean? Number of recorded tornadoes per thousand square miles, um, six to 10. Uh, so that's tornado activity in the US. Um, so we do see that spike over parts of central Indiana. Um, Kathy asking what the weekend's looking like. Saturday progressively looking a little more wet for us across central Indiana. The chance for showers and some storms. Here's some good news uh, just in for us. The Storm Prediction Center has now dropped the slight risk. We still are marginal. Um, so we still have a low or isolated threat for some of those stronger storms, mainly gusty winds with those storms. Uh, that would move through. Um, so Amber asking when can we expect the storm system to subside so once we get through say about two o'clock tonight we should be in pretty good shape um, and then tomorrow uh, things are pretty quiet models are trying to hint around uh, the evening hours some storms along and south of Interstate 70 uh, so we'll watch those of course we've got high school football games so uh, we'll be checking that out too uh, we'll go ahead and get ready to wrap up here, but uh, so that's some encouraging news. Again, we still want to monitor the weather situation, but the slight risk that we had earlier, that's been dropped. So still an isolated severe storm is possible for us with some of those gusty winds. And uh, then our digital team has put this together for you. You can find it on the RTV6 app. It's a map, an interactive map uh, of the tornadoes from yesterday. You can get more information, the brief touchdown on the northeast side of Indianapolis, also on the south side of Crawfordsville, around Lindsburg, also the multiple tornadoes that we had in Howard County, including the one uh, that was an EF3, and we also had one tornado that was on the ground for about 17 miles. So, uh, as we kind of wrap up here, uh, again, just kind of keep, if you've got the Storm Shield app, keep that handy. That'll send you any alerts, any warnings that we may get this evening. So far, storms have been uh, having a struggle uh, getting out there and trying to fire up. We're not complaining about that. We could use a quiet night. So everyone stay safe. Of course, uh, we'll continue to keep you updated on the social media platforms if anything changes tonight.